All right, so we're uh, back here up at the ranch. Haven't looked at the bees in a little while. Let's uh, go over there and have a see if they're still alive. So the first thing I've noticed about these bees is the hive is kind of twisted. Do you see that? So a cow or something must have pushed up against them. But uh, this is the hive that I combined. You see the two hives. Still some paper there that probably is probably fine. But uh, you can see there's a stick here that I've used to reduce the entrance so that only bees can get in and out of there. Knock on it, I can hear bees buzzing. It's a good sign. It's uh, not super cold right now. It was a pretty sunny day. I'm actually gonna crack this open and see how much honey they've got left. Okay, you can see the ball of bees here. Let's take this formic acid patty out of there. It's probably not doing them any good anymore. Come on, focus. There we go. Okay. Uh, still a little hard to see on the camera, but you can see the bees are all in a nice big ball in the frame. Apparently one's on the lens. So there's a big ball of bees right here. It's about the size of a basketball. You can just feel heat coming off of it. What they do is they cuddle up in here together and they shiver all winter long, eating honey and producing heat. Let's uh, put this lid back on before they get too cold. Okay, so as you can see, the bees are still alive. They're in the winter cluster right now. All the bees are up here in this uh, top orange box here. And they're all clustered together, like I said, in a, it's about the size of a basketball. And they're just uh, gonna kind of slowly move around and eat the honey. So what they're doing is they're eating the honey, they're using the honey as fuel to keep them warm. A lot of uh, people put insulation on their hives, you know, blankets or tarps or all sorts of stuff, even styrofoam padding. I've noticed that every time I've done something like that, the bees didn't make it through the winter. They seem to do just fine in their box, just as it is. And it kind of makes sense, because out in the wild, before humans started taking care of bees, you know, they didn't put extra insulation on their tree house, so why would we expect to need it now? <laughs> what would kill them with the insulation? So, uh, when I'd have insulation on the hive, uh, mostly what I'd have problems with is uh, moisture. The moisture would build up and it would get on the inside of the hive and it just drowned the bees. Because once they're wet, they really can't keep themselves warm. I've seen hives make it through the winter when the cows have tipped it over on its side and the lid had fell off. So, they're really, they're really just fine. The, the bees, the, their big ball, they insulate themselves. They got the fur on them and they're shivering through the winter and they're producing heat. They're actually pretty well insulated just as a big ball of bees. So how cold would you say it got when their hive was tipped over and they lived? I think it was negative nine. I think the coldest it got that winter was negative nine. Uh, it was negative 20 here just a week ago and uh, obviously they handled that just fine. And that's uh, negative 20 Fahrenheit, so that's what, negative 27 Celsius. If they're up in Alaska or something, yeah. I still don't think they'd really need any insulation as long as they have plenty of honey. Let's uh, go look at this other hive over here. So this hive here is the one that I took out of the building at the Utah Fabrication. And uh, you can see I've got some extra bee boxes here that I've leaned up against the side of it. That was just to block the wind because there's, you know, there's not very much natural wind blockage here. As you can see it does work because the snow gets deflected away from the hive exactly as I planned. Now if you look at this hive, there's actually a vent hole at the top. This is basically a second entrance, and I've seen the bees using this. You can see, if I look in here with the light, it is plugged off, so you, the bees can't fly straight into the box. Uh, there's like a little hole, so it's mostly plugged off, except for a little space right there. I can just about get my finger through it. And you can't really see it on the camera. The bees go in and down to get to the other bees. The bees aren't flying right now because it's uh, it's still rather cold, but uh, on nice warm days when the sun's heating the side of the box, they'll be flying out and they'll dropping little 
orange globs of bee poop all over the place. You can kind of see some of it here. Yeah, there's a speck of it right there and over here. Another good thing about this uh, top entrance is if we get lots of snow and it covers the hive, well, it's going to cover this entrance down at the bottom before it covers this one. So they got a better chance of being able to get out. I know people who have lost their hives because the snow come up, only covering up the two about halfway, but the entrance was blocked for such a long time that the bees eventually died in there. You can see the entrance on this one, I do have a mouse guard on here. That, that I just leave on year round to keep the mice out. And uh, I, I probably ought to order a few more for the other hives because it does work pretty well. I mean, obviously it was cold enough that the bees decided to plug it up, but that might have actually been because this is a big enough hole that the bees thought that a mouse might be able to get through there, so they reduced it down to a smaller size. I'm not sure if you guys could hear it when I tapped on the box right here. Can you hear the bees? Yeah. So, usually the bees start off up in the top of the box, or in the top box. But it seems this time that they've started off in the bottom box, which is a little unusual. And I think it's because I had a space up here where there was a couple of frames that didn't have honey. And the bees usually like to start off where there's got the most biggest solid chunk of honeycombs. Because they, they don't really want to move around in the winter. It's hard for them to move when it's so cold. And there's probably enough uh, honey down this bottom box to last them the entire rest of the season. And if they do run low, then they'll send scouts up into the upper box here and that you'll bring down honey for them. Or the entire cluster may move up into here as long as they've got good amount of bracing in there to be able to climb over the gap. It seems like this year that the varroa mites aren't uh, hurting them as bad, so I think my formic acid treatment must have worked. <laughs> Well, I knew it would happen one day. The trees finally fell over. Right on top of the beehive. Thumbnail. <laughs> oh, and it actually fell on it. Look at that. Eh, doesn't look damaged. And I guess it uh, does just as well at keeping the cows away as the fence would. <laughs> I'm gonna go tap on the hive and make sure the bees are okay. Oh yeah, they're okay. Back, they're coming out again. All right, it didn't hurt them to have a tree fall on the hive. I'll just have to bring the chainsaw down here at some point. As you can see from my snowy throne here, the weather took a turn for the worse. I wanted to completely redo this uh, bee video here because most of my subscribers are from a period when I wasn't doing a whole lot of bee videos. And so there's a lot of questions that I left unanswered that I wanted to cover. But uh, obviously I can't open the hive when it's got this kind of weather here. So uh, the first question is uh, why can't I open the hive in bad weather? The bees are perfectly fine with dealing with cold. Uh, why wouldn't they be able to handle you know, a little extra cold, maybe a little bit of snow falling on them? Well, the answer is not actually that the bees uh, have trouble with the cold. In fact, like I said, the bees handle having the lid off the hive just fine, as long as you don't get the rain and snow actually going down in on the bees. The real problem is when they crack open the hive, all the seals that the bees have put in place, the propolis and stuff that they've sealed the hive with, that gets broken. And it's very difficult for them to put it back when it's got cold weather like this. And so now you've introduced leaks into the hive where small critters could get inside. So opening the lid of a hive is generally not super bad, but like opening the actual boxes and pulling them apart, pulling frames out, that's going to cause them problems. Uh, that, that leads into another thing. 
the bracing comb that I was talking about before, how the bee is used to get between the boxes. The worker bees could get between them just fine. But I've actually had this happen before when the queen gets stuck down in the bottom box and the bees go up and uh, the workers can go up but the queen gets stuck because she can't climb across the gap. What she normally uses to get across gaps like that is the bracing comb. The little bits of uh, wax and stuff that join between the boxes that most early beekeepers uh, scrape off and think that the bees are making a mistake. No, the bees are actually building that so that they can get the queen between the boxes. Uh, the next uh, question I'd like to answer is that uh, I have multiple different types of hives. I kind of tried to focus on the uh, Lengthsworth hive, the most common box style beehive since that's what most people have. But I also showed my uh, top bar hive and I've also got a couple of long hives. Uh, the bees, like I said, will start their cluster where they've got the most honey. Normally that's uh, for a Lengthsworth hive that's up in the upper box, but that's because the beekeepers have made the bees do that. Is we want to keep the bees uh, with their brood nest all in the bottom box because that's generally where the bees start off for the beginning of the year it's where they raise their baby bees and that's usually where the queen stays and then above that or off the side of that in the longer hives is where the bees start storing their honey in my case this year it seemed that at least in that one hive the bees backfilled most of the combs where they're raising the baby bees with honey and only a small amount of it was put up into the upper box. That's totally fine as long as the bees are able to have enough honey. That brings me up to the next question which is how much honey does a hive need in order to survive winter? Well that's obviously highly variable because winters have a varying length depending on where you are in the world. Uh, generally what I look for is the length of time between frosts. For uh, Salt Lake City that happens to be about 170 days and so the winter is 170 days long. You're going to have flowers that uh, bloom before and after that period. So I've, I've seen bees bringing back uh, pollen in the middle of February, but I generally try to assume that you got the worst possible case, which is the full length of winter, no flowers for the bees, 170 days. <laughs> the bees will consume about a quarter to half a pound of honey per day to keep themselves warm and do their metabolic processes just like any other animal. A hive which is twice as big does not necessarily eat twice as much honey though because it's mostly due to the surface area that the bees need to keep warm. So a hive that's twice as big might only need to eat 20% uh, more honey. So let's figure about half a pound a day, divide that by 170 days, you get uh, let's just say 80 pounds of honey is required. And each uh, frame, the standard size frame, that holds between 7 and 10 pounds of honey. So if you got a full box of those, the bees are probably set, at least for this climate. For somewhere that's colder for longer, you might need two full boxes. Somewhere that has uh, warmer weather and maybe doesn't even have winter, then you might not need any storage. So the temperature inside the hive. The bees try to keep it at least 40 degrees. Uh, in the very center of the cluster where the queen is, you might have up around 80 degrees, but as long as it's above 40 degrees somewhere in the cluster, the bees are probably fine. I think that's the main questions I wanted to answer. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.